The overall context of where all of this fits is important to understand. And the World Economic Forum has published the, the fourth industrial revolution as a trend where, you know, in the past, steam engines transformed society, then electricity, most recently it's computers and the internet, so so to speak, the digital revolution. And the one that's coming up front is this convergence between AI, technology, biology, and all the other tools to actually completely change everything. And so a lot of people still have this discussion of what about AI, what about the downsides and whatnot, and folks, it's coming, and we have a choice to make, and the only choice we get to make is does it happen to us or does it happen with us? What can we do to actually um, in, get involved? Why do we want to see more AI in our practices? It's because it can make sense of things that we don't understand. Right now, we're putting patients into groups just because we have to. We're using averages for diabetes and heart failure. But Dr. Haddad earlier this morning talked about the importance of personalized. We can't manage the volume of data without AI. So what is actually happening in that space? You have a lot of companies using AI for predictive analytics, and so they take pre-programmed scoring of things that we know make someone more fragile or more at risk, and they deliver that score. So we don't have to administer questionnaires and uh, uh, spend time. Th this can be sent to the patient ahead of time and augmented by wearable devices. So not just what patient says that they did or didn't do, but what their heart monitor and diabetes glucometer and other machines send up this information. There's chatbots that can do a little bit of pre-screening before a visit so that the patient's ability to share this story is much more organized in their head. And then there's predictive health trackers that support whether the activities that the person is doing in terms of sleep, exercise, and other things will implement and will lead them to be successful in the future. So that it's not at the next visit three months later that we discover that they didn't do what we recommended, but we can actually intervene faster. I hear a lot about virtual health. Oh, it's a virtual walk-in clinic. Yes, but it can also be bringing back the house call. It's the ability to be connected and more closer to the patient. It's about how we interpret what technology needs to do. It's about us creating evidence over what works and doesn't work and why my EMR doesn't seem to understand that the allergy alert needs to be connected to the prescription so that I can't accidentally prescribe penicillin to someone who's got an allergy for that. It's about funding, not just to create the technology, but to keep evaluating it and keep evolving it. It's about sharing know-how of how we're using and applying this technology. And fundamentally, it's about leadership, but it's also sharing these examples, which is the purpose of this conference. And so the question here is adaptability quotient, is how ready are we to embrace of this? Is it scary to us as a profession to talk about AI and some of these tools? And feels like, oh, you know, I have no basis to understand them. Or did I help you understand that you have a lot of the data points or knowledge bases that what got us here can definitely take us there and we can be the leaders of that new movement around creating AI tools that patients and physicians want.